Hi, I'm Brad Tier, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this paint. In a few minutes, I'm going to be painting uh, this painting right here. And I use this new paint. It's uh, Lily Artist Oil Paints. I found this paint very intriguing and um, wanted to give it a try. The maker of this paint, Walter Haas, he, said, he told me that, um, that my blog was instrumental in, in inspiring him to make this. So I was really honored by that. So let's give it a try. Here's the finished painting, and you can see the brush strokes fairly apparent, which I really liked about this paint. These are the colors I started with. Raw umber, phthalo blue, uh, that red I'm not sure what it, what it is, it's in German, I think it's uh, Napsol red, cadmium yellow light, titanium white. Here's the raw umber, and I didn't really use a lot of that. I don't use a lot of uh, earth colors. I did use some of this raw umber though. A very nice color. Overall the colors are really really good. Uh, I did use some of the yellow ochre and a little bit of the red, not a lot. I, that's a, a phthalo green and this is a cadmium orange. Initially, I wanted to oil up my whole canvas with a, just a light skim of the orange, but I, I forgot to do it. That's the cadmium yellow and the titanium white. So the first thing I do is I start uh, mixing up a little bit of orange, and then I want to complement that with the color of the sky. So I'm basically mixing up just patches of color that uh, you saw in that opening scene. I don't pre-mix every single shade or, or value shift, but I do think it's good to get a few notes ready on the palette, especially with this, uh, this new paint. I don't really know how it's going to react on the canvas, so I just want to have some uh, ready, so, you know, large bits of paint. One thing about using small patches of paint is it's harder to, you know, get enough on your brush. One thing I really loved about this paint was it was very easy to pick up the paint and get a, a nice glob of paint on the brush. Now usually, as you'll, if you've seen any of my other videos, I usually start with the sky and, and work down at to towards the front of you know the, the most the closest objects towards the picture plane but in this case I wanted to put that dark note in and I think it actually is a pretty good strategy uh, it's not the darkest note in the painting those trees actually are but um, this kind of helps me to get some color in that dark shape and not get go too dark if I you know I'm painting that dark up against that white of the canvas now I didn't think I needed um, to put that orange undercoat under. I, I am painting over a, an acrylic sketch. I did this with an uh, acrylic marker. Uh, but the paint comes off the brush so easily with these lily paints that I didn't really need to oil up the canvas. Now it would have it would have uh, forced a little orange into every color and that might have been a nice effect but um, I, I don't really think I needed needed it for um, you know to lubricate the canvas you know like it's nice to paint if your canvas is very absorbent it's good to paint into a bit of a an oil surface you know um, that's not as important if your canvas is very non-absorbent if it's very sharp as the old timers used to say now I'm just putting in some of that orange and yellow into this band across here. Um, I'm painting from a, a, a sketch and um, with some color notes and so I'm just kind of matching some of my colors. Here I am going in painting some of the shadow of the cloud. Now initially I felt this was the right value but as I got into it and started adding I decided that that value is a little too dark, so later in the painting you'll see me tone that down considerably. But um, that's a that's a common fault with 
painting clouds is to get your darks too dark. The value range on a cloud is very, very narrow. But one thing I really loved about this paint, this lily paint, uh, it's made in Austria, by the way, and um, the fellow painter that makes it, uh, he went to a lot of effort to get the paint so that it's very receptive. By that I mean you, you paint a layer down and the next layer of paint just sort of pulls it right off the brush. And I know he experimented a lot. I know he, uh, one of the items he added was uh, fume silica. I don't know if that ended up in this final formula. But the color just really comes off the brush. I mean, I didn't have to think about in adding any medium, or I actually didn't have to do a lot of thinking at all during this whole painting. This painting process was very intuitive because the paint just felt absolutely fantastic. Um, I haven't actually painted in oils for quite a while. I've been getting ready for an abstract show, and I paint my abstracts in acrylic. And so this is is coming to oils from a long time of not not actually painting in oils and so I I think it's quite amazing uh, the facility I I return to uh, after a period of inactivity but um, I, I really take my hat off to uh, Lily Paints it's, it's it's good stuff and I really appreciate them uh, let me try it out um, it's probably a little bit hard to, f to know exactly what I'm talking about if you don't have a lot of experience, you know, with with different kinds of paint. But what a lot of my technique is about is getting a lot of paint on my brush so that it'll come off easily into a nice stroke. And I don't necessarily mean uh, a really dimensional stroke, but I mean just a stroke that has a, a nice, uh, a nice texture to it. And this paint kept the texture very, very nicely. Uh, at the end here, you'll see another close-up, and and you'll see all of the the brush strokes. So here, I'm just you know adding in the darks of the trees, um, and uh, and softening a few edges here and there, adding a little bit of detail. Now, a really good test of of this paint would would have been a, maybe a scene that had some very fine lines in it. I didn't have a lot of fine lines, just just a, a little bit around the clouds. Mm -hmm. But say a tree or or um, you know uh, something with branches or like grass or something like that would have been a nice test. So I might give that a try in a bit. But uh, this is was really really fun to, to try and like I say um, if you can get to the point where you're just drawing intuitively, you're not really thinking a lot about um, values and things. Although, now that I think about it, it would have been fun to try the value scale on this as, as I'm kind of returning to oils. See if I could have nailed a few of those values just a little bit better. My wife, who's a painter, she said the trees in the foreground looked a little too dark in her to her eye. But here I am, I'm adding, I'm pushing in some whites, some warm whites into the, the dark of the, tr of the uh, clouds. And it's just really so easy to, to do with this paint. It was really, really fun. Um, it, the paint kind of sticks where it is. I mean, it doesn't, uh, without being difficult to move around, it, it, it stays where you put it. And um, so it's kind of, it's a bit of a paradox, really what you want in an oil paint. You want to be able to push it around, but you want it to stick and be receptive to the next layer. I felt like I could put as much color on this as I as I wanted. I could have just layered one layer over another without any any problem. I could have, without any muddiness or pulling up the color. So it was really, really fun. And I just, I'm adding a little bit of detail that I'm actually not seeing in my sketch, but I just felt like some of the areas were a little too blank and I just needed to add some detail. So, you know, clouds, they, they have a lot of sort of random, although, you know, detail, although it's pretty, uh, you know, predictable too. These, sh these cloud shapes are a little unusual, which is part of the fun of this motif. So I'm just, you know, putting in, it looked a little too massive, so I'm kind of like putting little holes where 
the cloud might get a little thinner up against that white band of sky. Then I need to put some, you know, cloud holes in the trees that they were, you know, too massive. And and just putting little pointillistic dabs of color of a lighter value can really help, you know, those shapes that get a little too heavy. Now here I'm taking a, a brush, a, a, a filbert, a very long filbert, and just very softly uh, softening that edge along the skyline. And if you've you know, done this before with a, a flat, it's kind of difficult. So the filbert really is a great, a great tool. And I felt like I didn't have enough reflected light into the clouds, and so I'm, I mixed up a little bit of orange, and I'm just slightly skimming that color on. I mean, it's just pulling that color off. I'm not hardly disturbing the color underneath at all. So that was a really, a really fun part of this process. One color I could have used in, in this set of colors would have been a, a very cool red, you know, like a Quinn red. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to use all of the Lily colors without mixing in any, any other hues, so it worked pretty good. But this warm orange works, works good enough. Just adding a little bit of darker detail into the sky. Just, um, it's really, really uh, fun to to use this paint. So uh, it was it was it was a great experiment, and I really appreciate Walter Haas for sending me the paints. Mm -hmm.